circuit of a radio oscillator uh, with a field effect transistor. It has to do with the pancake coil, but <coughs> uh, no longer. Uh, I have paid too much attention to that pancake coil. And here is more or less a very simple field effect transistor oscillator that you can make with the BF256A <coughs> that's a N field effect transistor, a N FET and here is the schematic uh, don't pay too much attention to that power supply the only aim of that power supply was to get 24 volt to that field effect transistor and not only 24 volts but uh, a voltage between 0 and 24 volts and I use this transformer uh, it gave out perhaps 18 volts or 24 volts but after the bridge rectifier I found that it was uh, 36 volts that's quite high so I had to drop down the voltage somewhat and made the voltage variable to the oscillator uh, to say align the amplitude output amplitude and I will show that in this video uh, voltage supply is by the way completely classical a transformer a bridge rectifier of course uh, a fuse and a capacitor in this case as far as I can see of 1800 uh, microfarad better value is uh, 4700 microfarad but anyway uh, when you use such a uh, resistor here there is a kind of filter effect so when you have here 36 volt with 1800 microfarad and this is uh, say a kind of resistor it's a kind of P filter so that means that the hum whatever when it is uh, when it's there goes down because we also have here a capacitor of 10 microfarad this acts as a kind of P filter but at the same time as a voltage regulator and because the simple fact that such a circuit only takes a few milliamperes that's no problem so uh, you only get hum out of the power supply when the current is high and the current is here extremely tiny anyway let's look at the circuit again it's a very classical uh, radio oscillator I made it here with a coil that's the ape hair coil you can see it here 350 windings very very thin wire and I'm more or less sure that I paid more attention to this setup in earlier videos. But anyway. And then we have here the oscillator. Uh, the coil in the source lead is bridged with a 150 picofarad capacitor. And from the source to the gate there is a 1000 picofarad capacitor. Uh, when you uh, make the value of this capacitor smaller you can go to higher frequencies anyway that's important for instance when you make it 220 picofarad here you can go to 10 megahertz or 8 megahertz but now I only want to give a first demo with the, this coil uh, anyway uh, it could be any coil that you can connect to this uh, uh, oscillator of course not always any coil uh, the windings ratio must be 
at least in this setup, between say 30 windings and 100 windings. The tuning capacitor is between 0 and 500 picofarad. Good value is for instance uh, 10 picofarad to 150 picofarad anyway. Do some experiments. It's an experimental circuit, though it works very good. It was published in the ARRL American Radio League uh, book. Pin connections. Uh, say this refers here. 1000 picofarad to this situation anyway. Let's look what this circuit can bring. By the way, important to tell that it has no buffer. So we only have here a capacitor of 39 picofarad. 39 picofarad. Uh, you can use a higher value capacitor, say 100 picofarad. Of course, in such a case, could be that the oscillator gets somewhat damped uh, due to the higher value of this output capacitor. Anyway, let's look to the scope. We are now on 2.1 megahertz. It's a very pure sine wave. I had not expected uh, something else and the reason is that this circuit always worked very good I made it many times so uh, this is the, the the pure sine wave and let's see what happens when we change the supply voltage to the oscillator it's now approximately 24 volts let's go to 12 volt or so well switch off the lights now we are approximately on 12 volts it's completely logical that the amplitude of the oscillator diminishes and here it goes up again the amplitude when we go to 24 volts uh, of course when we change the tuning capacitor here uh, the frequency surely changes because we change here the capacitor in the tank circuit anyway let's try and see frequency goes down and on a certain moment it's important to tell the oscillation stops so say uh, with this tap a certain tap on that coil you can you you can also do that experimentally uh, the oscillation stops. And now it, it's suddenly there. Has everything to do with oscillation properties of a transistor, a field effect transistor, or a normal transistor, a bipolar transistor, anyway. Let's see how we can get to another frequency, 1.7 MHz. And now 2.1 megahertz so that I think it's a, uh, a good demonstration of course I can try to uh, use another tap of this coil it's the pancake coil but don't worry about the pancake coil it could be any coil this oscillator is very eager to oscillate so we go now to tab 2 and now we are on this frequency and that's very low 
say 818 kilohertz so 0 0.82 megahertz and when I tune here the uh, the tuning capacitor again that's this capacitor here we surely can see that the frequency changes from the uh, say highest value the lowest value of that uh, tuning capacitor to the higher values and you can see that it suddenly stops so we have a good oscillation on 771 kilohertz uh, this is the setting approximately 100 picofarad and this is 70 picofarad uh, well it suddenly stops anyway uh, this uh, video is a demo, a demo of a very, very successful uh, radio oscillator, analog sine wave oscillator. Do your experiments, no problems with that. It always works very good. Uh, try other coils try another tuning capacitor and of course this is old school analog technology and it surely works thanks for watching